So our dilemma when we left off was trying to figure out how do we get the information on this edit action to the form to be able to edit. And so how do we do that? Well, hopefully, as you've thought about it, we're going to need to load up that record from the database to be able to access the information. And so we can do just like we've done here. We can come in and say, well, I want to load up a var and just call it, um, you know, the record <laughs> that we're going to edit, record to edit, um, is equal to, and then we can go pull from the context file, which is our liaison to the database. And it's the one that's like the instance of the database, but in C sharp instead. And so at least that's the way I think about it. I don't know if a, a you know Microsoft person would <laughs> say that is true. That's the way I think about it. We're going to go to the applications table and we want to get the record where what? And this is where we're going to run into a problem. We want to know which record it is we're going to edit. And in any given, so we're, we're creating a dating application thing here. Well, the problem is, can you have two people that have the same name that want to go out with you? And the answer is yes, right? And so how do we uniquely identify these individuals? And we could take all the records and everything, but the truth is we already have in our model something set up to store that information, and that's the application ID. And so if I can figure out a way to get the application ID from this form to my home controller, then I can just say where x lambda x dot, and then um, I can say the application ID is equal to something, so one or whatever, right? But instead we'll, we'll substitute in a number. So how do I get the information from this dating application form to the home controller? And this is where that little uh, tidbit of information that we shared a little while back from the program CS file helps us. So we said our pattern was that we're going to have a, a home controller, or sorry, a controller first, that and then default is home, and then the action next, and then we have this little thing on here that says slash ID. And back then we were wondering, well, what would we ever do with that? If we're trying to pass information through the URL, we can use that, that pattern. So there's uh, some different things we can do here to get this in, but, but we'll look at one of those options. So on the wait list, I need to keep track of what the ID is. The problem is right now that I'm not, I'm getting all these different fields but which one is the ID? And so it's currently not um, listed here as we're going through and, and doing this on each of the rows. I need to have some way to keep track of as it's looping through this list of applications that have come through. I need some way to at the time it's going through the loop printing out that row to say, hey, this is for number one, this is for number two, this is for number three. Now I could just easily put in here and say the application. So let's add a row and I'm going to put in here and say the application ID. Okay. So, and it is case sensitive. Did I name it? So typical naming convention, by the way, in the app, in the, um, .NET world is to have a lowercase D. Now you don't want to ever rename anything like that because it'll cause problems. But if you write, if you highlight it and then right click and say rename and then say, no, I actually wanted to have a lowercase d, then that'll rename it anywhere in that connection. Um, so anyway, okay, save all back to my dating application. So, um, oh, sorry, back to my wait list is where we want to be. Then I've created this application ID, but now when I run this, First of all, it's going to put the application ID in the first name field because I didn't put a uh, heading for it. But second of all, do I want them to see this number? Do I want the, whoever's editing this to see the primary keys? And the answer is probably not. Um, and so what do I do? Well, 
it's a pretty simple solution. We do put the information in there, but what we do is instead of, um, let's see, so instead of putting it specifically here in a row, we're going to do something just a little bit different because that's going to, again, print out the information. It's going to throw off our table and everything like that. But when I build this link on the edit, I'm going to add in another attribute to this tag, and I'm going to use something called ASP route, and then the name of whatever it is I want to pass up in the route. And so I'll just use the generic term ID, but I could use blah. Okay. In essence, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a variable that's going to be sent through the ASP route. So ASP route, and I'll use again ID because that's what we set up in our program CS file that ID might be passed. All right. So now back to my uh, wait list. I'm going to set the ASP route ID for this row. Now picture this is going through in a loop and each row is being created with that first name, last name, age, major, phone number, and creeper stalker. And I'm going to set the route if they click on this link. I'm going to set the route equal to at to give us our C sharp code, the name of whatever entry we are in the model, so X, so wherever we are in our list at that point, and then I'm going to go pull the application ID. And that is going to be part of my tag. So let's let's go look at it. Let's watch it work. So I've got the waitlist. Now if I hover over this button, Notice what it did down here, and I can't move my mouse. Or in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, it says HTTPS localhost home edit one. And then if I hover this one, it's home edit three for me. I've messed around with the database a little bit, so I don't know if it'll be exactly the same for you. And so I'm putting into the route the ID of the record that I'm trying to edit. Okay. All right. So. Now, when I click on this, when it goes to that edit action, it's passing in that one as the ID, the optional, uh, in our program CS file, the optional piece of information here that I can pass to get that information. Now, we're going to find different ways to, to hide this and, and that. But um, in this case, I just want to show you that you can use that. And... Um, Anyway, we could name this blah and then name it blah on the other side where we do our routing, our ASP route, whoops, our ASP route blah. But for now, it's looking for an ID. And so now on the edit side, in the action for the home controller, we can set up to receive this by saying, hey, when they call this edit action, we were going to require that there's an int that comes in that's going to represent the, the record ID. Okay, so that will be passed in to us. And then here in the application ID, I can say go edit instead the record ID. Does that make sense? And, I, and whatever, this is just a name I'm giving it, so don't get too caught up in what I'm naming it. But the idea here is I'm now going through the route going to be past that ID that I can then catch and use to load up the correct record. And so let's see if it works. Let's just see if we can do this quickly. So I view the waitlist. I'm going to edit George Michael Booth. And I come in here and what was passed in oh, was a zero. So that's not exactly what I wanted. Um, <laughs> and so it's not going to have the right record. Well, that's a bummer. Let's figure out what happened in the next video. Big cliffhanger. Spencer out.